Hello again. In this playlist, I'm going to talk about how to dimension fillet welds according to Eurocode 1993-18. According to this code, we have two methods, directional and simplified method, to dimension or check a fillet weld. The fillet weld is used for transferring the load from one part to the other part, and it is important to understand how the loads are coming towards the fillet weld, and then from there is going to be taken by the other part. In this video, I'm going through the introduction and explain what is given in Eurocode. And then I will continue with directional method in the other video with one example. And then we will continue with the simplified method and also one example. At the end, I will go through the modeling with ANSYS with solid element to check and cross check our calculation with the code. After that, I will give Another example with the ANSYS, how to use joints for calculation and dimensioning a fillet belt. The belt connection is given in section four of Eurocode 1993-18. In general option, we read the first item that the Material thickness should be four millimeter or over that. If you want to use a thinner material, there are some other ways that you can read from the code. For welds in thinner materials, reference should be made to 1993 part one three, and for weld in a structural hollow sections in material thickness of 2.5 millimeter and over, guidance is given section four of this standard. Also, we need to prevent lamellar tearing should be avoided. It's a kind of tearing from the bottom root of the fillet welt. You can Google it and find out how it looks like. In clause 432, fillet welds are explained. In the first item, it is general explanation. Fillet welds may be used for connecting parts where the fusion faces from an angle of between 62 60 and uh, 120 degrees. Angles smaller than 60 degrees should be considered as partial penetration weld. For angles greater than 120 degrees, the resistance of fillet welds should be determined by testing in accordance with 1990 and next D design by testing. Also fillet welds finishing at the ends or sides of parts should be written continuously full size around the corner for a distance of at least twice the leg length of the weld. So if we look at one fillet weld, this is the leg size, let's say with W. So if this is the leg size, and for example, if we have this part to be welded to the other part, and if we are going to weld here, then it should have a return with the minimum of 2 W return length. Unless access or the configuration of the joint renders this impracticable. In case of intermittent welds, the welds that you weld uh, for a distance and then leave the rest free and then start to weld again. So this is intermittent welds and it is used usually for uh, making heavy profiles. This rule applies only to the last intermittent fillet weld at corners. End returns should be indicated on the drawings always. And for eccentricity of single sided fillet welds, we can check for 12. Plus for 5 design resistance of a fillet weld length of welds. The effective length of a fillet weld L should be taken as the length over which the fillet is full size. This may be taken as the overall length of the weld reduced by twice the effective throat thickness A, provided that the weld is full size throughout its length, including starts and terminations. No reduction in effective length needs to be made for either the start or the termination of the weld. So usually we deduct two times A, um, even though it, it doesn't really affect the design significantly if if you dimension the weld with a 
quite good margin, then this value might not affect that much. A fillet weld with an effective length less than 30 millimeter or less than six times its throat thickness, whichever is larger, should not be designed to carry the load. For example, assume that we have a, um, a weld with the dimension of 10 millimeter with uh, throat thickness of seven millimeter, then six times seven millimeter will be 42 millimeters. 42 and 30, the greater value is 42 millimeter. So if the length is less than 42 millimeter, then we do not consider the fillet weld to carry any load. Effective throat thickness, the effective throat thickness A of a fillet weld should be taken as the height of the largest triangle with equal or unequal legs that can be inscribed within the fusion faces and the weld surface. Measured perpendicular to the outer side of this triangle. I provided the figure even in the code. In figure 4.3 we can see the throat thickness of a fillet weld. So here we can see that this is written as A and if we assume this is the leg. Here also you can see how it is interpreted. In 4.5.3 design resistance of fillet welds. The design resistance of a fillet weld should be determined using either the directional method given in 4532 or the simplified method given in 4533. So this is the introduction of how to design the fillet welds. But more important note about how to design the fillet weld is how to calculate the properties of a fillet weld. Assume we are going to have a fillet weld for two channels and they are going to be welded by this green hatch. To dimension this uh, fillet weld or any other kind of fillet welds, first we need to transfer all the loads to the center of the fillet weld. Also, we need to calculate the geometry of the weld and calculate the moment of inertia, area of the weld, and then we can continue with either directional method or simplified method. For that, I prefer to continue this in the next video. First, we will go through how to transfer the loads from the body or the first body to the center of fillet weld. And then I will explain how to calculate the properties of the weld and after that, we can continue with one of the methods, which will be directional method. In this video, we went through the introduction of fillet welds according to Eurocode 1993-18. We can continue directly with the directional method, but I prefer to go through how to transfer the loads from one part, which is going to transfer the loads through the weld to the other party, to the center of the weld. And then I will go through the calculation of properties of weld. And after that, it is much more easier to continue with directional method. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.